Hello, this is Carl Irwin with a uh, kind of a quick tutorial, a quick tip here. Uh, I've been playing around lately with um, a different uh, OpenGL and GLSL uh, material kind of uh, set uh, setups and uh, using lights as masks to uh, generate uh, shadow and different types of uh, shading effects. And uh, uh, the latest thing I've been playing around with just a little bit today was a... Uh, uh, some ideas and tricks for creating sort of a subsurface uh, scattering kind of effect uh, where the uh, a light uh, generated at a certain um, energy would uh, illuminate the outside of the uh, uh, material uh, and cast appropriate shadows but uh, a light of a, a larger intensity, a greater intensity up close uh, would uh, uh, generate kind of a subsurface uh, scattering sort of effect. So if we look here at the uh, ear on uh, Suzanne, if you check out the rest of the material here, we have kind of a general uh, shadow casting. and and uh, But over here, where we have a, a point light at a really high energy, a small point light, you can see that it uh, appears to be shining through, and we can see kind of uh, under, under the surface... Um, type materials in there showing through. Uh, we can move this uh, light uh, through the ear. You can see the shadow in there and as we uh, move the light into the ear and through it that shadow dissipates and we can see uh, kind of a, a density here in the uh, material uh, as the uh, light moves through it and it, it illuminates from the inside out so uh, we can actually cause uh, Suzanne here to glow a little bit even though uh, there's still some shadow on the outside uh, the uh, there seems to be light illuminating the inside and if we move the light right up to the edge all those uh, shadows will uh, disappear and this seems to um, uh, work such that there is a uh, light fall off once the uh, intensity of the energy reaches a certain point uh, it fails to cast uh, light through the material uh, past that point generating this kind of a waxy uh, kind of a material, a subsurface sort of material where light seems to be bouncing and scattering through and then uh, falling off. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, share this idea with you. This is nothing new. People have been doing things like this for a while, um, but uh, this is just uh, what I've uh, come up with. And I wanted to show you this uh, material setup so I could uh, sort of explain to you what I'm doing. I don't really have a clear application for this yet. Maybe for some sort of a simple asset in a scene, if you had like a, if you're making a, a CG a candle or something like that with a flickering light, and you wanted to be able to see uh, through the waxy structure, uh, you could render this out maybe with this type of a material and um, render it out very quickly using OpenGL and GLSL rendering. And you can see how quickly this renders. This is at 1080p high definition HD and. Uh, get a really really fast uh, frame there full full resolution and uh, and everything so just let me explain the materials really quickly here this will be just kind of a short little uh, overview of what's going on so if we select uh, Suzanne we can see that there's one two three four five separate materials here uh, that we're using to create this one kind of effect uh, and the top material the main uh, skin this is kind of a skin type color and texture this main material is uh, uh, edited, or rather mixed, with the others via the node editor. So if uh, we open up the node editor, we can uh, sort of see how this fits together. So we'll open up the node editor and uh, move this out of the way. And let me move this uh, sidebar out so we can see a little bit better. And uh, we'll zoom in and I'll just kind of show you what's going on here one, uh, one part at a time. So this is the... Um, this is the main uh, material. <coughs> you can see what it looks like with uh, just the lights casting on it. Uh, this is the uh, main material with a uh, vertex paint um, ambient occlusion uh, effect on it. And you can see that the uh, ambient occlusion vertex paint layer is now mixed in with it. So we get this... Uh, kind of a perception that there's some shadow in there. Uh, again, this was done very quickly, so it's not the uh, prettiest looking, most realistic looking uh, mix, but uh, you can kind of see the potential. Uh, this material also has a texture that uh, 
uh, is enabling a kind of a geometric uh, bump mapping on here too, just to kind of add a little bit more realism. Uh, then we have uh, an additional uh, texture. We have a sub, a skin sub mask. So what we're doing is I'm using this uh, this material as a um, sort of as a masking material uh, to determine uh, the proximity that a light has to be in order to illuminate. Uh, the subsurface properties. So let me find this real quick here. So this is the uh, subsurface mask and I'll bring this over. You can see what it looks like. And uh, let me move this lamp out so you can sort of see you can see how the lamp affects this material. So uh, if I move the lamp away, it's just kind of a gray material, and uh, once it gets within close proximity, it, it illuminates up uh, kind of a bright white right in the center there. And uh, this is being used as a mask uh, to uh, uh, activate uh, another glowing internal type material, uh, you see. And I put this uh, curve on it, an RGB curve, to uh, kind of uh, clamp down on it so you can see how this mask operates. It's clamped down pretty hard so that um, it's it's much darker in the areas that that are away from it and much much brighter towards the core uh, which is how we want the light properties to work. Uh, what we want to avoid is having uh, just general scene lights activating the internal materials so um, this is a, a set with this uh, curve on it to be activated at a specific uh, uh, energy uh, kind of uh, situation. So this light is operating as a three-dimensional uh, volumetric sort of mask. And uh, you've seen me use this kind of trick before uh, when uh, generating shadows and, uh, and whatnot uh, around uh, objects using shadeless materials. So again, these are not shadeless materials. These are uh, light accepting materials. And the uh, material being used here is a Fresnel uh, material, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really cast shadows on itself. Um, it's, it, it in and of itself is kind of a waxy material. Uh, and uh, the next material that we're using is uh, the uh, glowing material, and I'll look at a couple of different uh, materials associated with this. So the uh, first one is just this general uh, glowing material, and this is a, a shadeless, well, it's not a shadeless material. Uh, actually, is it a shadeless material? Give me one second here. Let me take a look at this. Uh, no, it's not a shadeless material. It's a shaded material. Um, I don't think I have any... Sh I might have one shadeless material on here. I'll show you in a second. This is a shaded material, so it will illuminate as the lights uh, pass uh, around it. Uh, I'm not sure that it needs to be. probably could be shadeless, and that would be fine. But it's also, again, a Fresnel-type material. Uh, now, mixed in with this material, I have a couple of other, uh, a couple of other materials as well. So let me get back to my node setup. I have in here also a, uh, a texture that uh, is used to generate kind of a subsurface uh, capillary sort of uh, uh, mask. And you can see what this looks like. So it's just kind of a marbly texture. And uh, this is mixed in with the glowing texture, or the uh, internal subsurface uh, pinky kind of texture. Uh, to generate this kind of capillary sort of uh, material or texture that appears to be kind of underneath the surface. Um, and it's also mixed together, this uh, pink uh, internal material is mixed together with uh, another uh, another kind of uh, a mask, and uh, that's this one here, which is a normal mask. And uh, what, what this is used to do is to take these parts that are on the outside edges that would, uh, in, in a dense, rather in a solid material, be more dense. So the parts that are the normals facing away from your point of view would be the more dense kind of areas. And I use this as a mask uh, to apply a, uh, a slightly different color. And uh, if we put these all together, we get uh, something that looks uh, somewhat like this. So you'll see that uh, this mask, this normal mask, is applying kind of a darker color around the edges here, kind of more of a dense view, plus this capillary sort of texture in there as well. 
Uh, and uh, this is the uh, material that we're trying to illuminate uh, using our three-dimensional volumetric mask. And once we apply all these things together, once again, we get uh, this, sort of, uh, this sort of effect that is uh, occurring again in real time. So, um, you know, not perfectly convincing, but, uh, you know, perhaps convincing enough for in specific situations not certainly not a trick that you'd want to use on a wide scale but uh for the uh um you know for the, in the interest of compositing maybe one element or one object into a uh, kind of a visual effect sort of scene uh you can see perhaps the uh, potential for this kind of a um material setup so again nothing new this kind of thing has been done before i'm i'm certainly not the first to do it i think i believe i've seen things like this before uh, but uh, just, you know, this is what I've been playing around with, and you can kind of see the potential for this sort of a uh, setup. And I'm sure that with a little bit more time, you could really push this even a little bit further. Uh, you know, if once I find an application for it or maybe a use for it in a scene, I'll, maybe I'll put up a demonstration. But uh, I just wanted to share this with you today, something that I've been playing around with a little bit uh, in the interests of using uh, volumetric uh, uh, masks uh, via point lights inside of uh, OpenGL. And uh, just also to demonstrate, you know, again, that uh, this kind of a thing can be used as a separate layer um, into the video sequence editor via a, uh, a scene layer. And uh, you can see how this is, works. This is the uh, first uh, scene put into a second scene. And uh, this is the uh, layer, again, rendering in real time. And you could animate the lights in there and use this scene, uh, enable the alpha uh, transparency ability and composite this directly into some other footage. Uh, so you can see the potential in the uh, real, real-time compositing power here that we have uh, in uh, in Blender. So uh, hopefully you find this useful and you uh, you know it inspires you to uh, uh, experiment around with this technique. So um, uh, good luck with this, and I wish all of you uh, happy blending.